In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our gnomies. So uh, we're standing here in the middle of Eustis, Texas. And uh, City Hall right across the street there. It used to be First State Bank, but they're closed on Friday. Uh, wait, the post office used to be over here. I don't know where it went now. They still have to have a post office. That's an old post office that is now the Roost Cafe. There's police department over here. And a clock in the middle of town and the gazebo here in the middle of the city. We're gonna we're gonna drive around a bit here in Eustis. There are three significant uh, historical markers we're going to take a look at and a church and a church but we're going to have to drive to them and so um, they're not in the city proper they're out a ways but uh, we'll talk about those Eustace does have some interesting history even though it's a one horse town and I don't see the horse <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> he must have took off of the hills well but there's the railroad track Railroad tracks right behind us. I understand it used to be a thriving town, uh, not you know way back, but um, I'm not quite sure how old it is right now. But I know that there are other communities that preceded Eustis right here in this area, and we're gonna we're gonna learn a little bit more about those today. So come along for the ride. Let's go check out this clock tower over here. This is too damn funny. They don't. They they motorized, okay. But weed whacking is not their forte, evidently. Look, they got reserved parking for police cars. Wait, wait. How many cars do they need? Well, they got two. They got two, and they got reserved parking for three more. In memory and honor to all men and women of Eustis area who served our country in all military service. I wonder how many people that is. Five, I don't know. Six. I don't know that. It's a cute, cute little town. It is a cute little town. Is that a house? Well, it doesn't appear to be a business. It appears to have once been a business. That looks like a residence right now between the police department and the market which is also closed maybe the whole town closes on Friday why would the whole town close on Friday I don't know maybe it's something about Eustace they don't do business on Fridays I don't see much going on in the police I really department. want to know more about this log cabin up here too but evidently I'm not going to find that information out today not today we had to come up here on a Wednesday or Thursday or something Wednesday or Thursday? They're open then. <laughs> Are they not open Monday or Tuesday? Well, they're not open Fridays. <laughs> and this is Friday. <laughs> but there's the clock. <laughs> Folks, you got to love small Texas towns. But that railroad does play a significance in at least one of the towns that went away. Yeah, that so has a historical marker. Drive and get to the first historical marker. We can talk about what's going on here in Houston, Texas, or what used to go on.
standing in front of the Payne Springs Methodist Church and Cemetery. We're in a little town called Payne Springs. It's just outside of um, Eustis. It's uh, between Eustis and, and, and Maybank, I believe. Uh, just a little south of Eustis. And this church uh, has been going on strong now since the late 1800s. And uh, the town used to be called Mallard Prairie. And by 1880, the church already had a large membership and at that time met in a log structure. It served as a gathering place for elections, political rallies, summer revivals, and, and a bunch of other events. And then, uh, of course, the cemetery's been here probably just as long as the church. Local tradition indicates the cemetery first started when a child from a family traveling west was buried by a small cedar tree in the churchyard. The first marked grave was of a mother and daughter buried on the other side of the cedar. Eleanor Reynolds and her daughter, Mary Ann Davis, died within a day of each other. So uh, the Mary Mallard Prairie School stood here at this, uh, pretty close to this location near the church and the cemetery, and then moved across the road. And uh, the growth of the cemetery took on land where the school and early church buildings stood. So it's grown, and now it contains over 1,000 graves. Every year they have a July 4th uh, work day to raise funds for the cemetery's upkeep. We uh, came to this little town last year. There's a little, uh, that white building right over there. They have a, uh, what do they call an Opry. Yeah, People, they do. Uh, playing music and whatnot. We went to that, and they do that like once a month, and we went to that last year. It's, uh, it's like the third Saturday of the month. Yeah, something but like that. But I didn't that. realize, yeah, it is, it, it yeah. is in that building right there. It's in that building. We go around the curve here, and there's a parking lot over there. So well, this is Payne Springs, right outside of Eustis, Texas. But Payne Springs does not have... I don't think they have their own post office. They do not. They have a uh, Maybank address. They have a Maybank address, that's correct. So here's the cemetery, you can see. Uh, so we're standing here on the, looks like the back end of Cottonwood Cemetery. Uh, just outside of Eustis. This was a permanent settlement um, in this area. In this area that came to be called Cottonwood Community and it started in the 1840s and 50s and pioneering families settled here. They established a community church, a school, stores, a cotton gin, and in 1894 a post office known as Mance was built here. Now, that closed in 1905. And it wasn't open long. No, not long, but the community, um, again, came to be called Cottonwood. So it was Cottonwood, then it was Mance, and then it was Cottonwood. Uh, so the first known use of this property as a burial ground occurred in 1871 when landowner Shadrach Green buried his son-in-law here. Ten years later, he sold his land to another son-in-law. A state rep in the 25th and 26th Texas legislatures, William Hugh Graham, that's the guy's uh, son-in-law, used most of the property for his home place and farm, but continued to offer the area near Smith's graves as, as a burial place for the community. And it was referred to as the Graham Cemetery. After he died in 1919, his widow and their children donated three acres of land to the people of the Cottonwood community and to Henderson County to be used as burial ground. The Cottonwood Cemetery is a reflection of the heritage of this part of Henderson County. Veterans of armed conflicts from the Civil War to Vietnam are buried here, as are early settlers and landowners including members of the Benge, Brewer, Frazier, Foster, Garrett, Morton, Roberson, Henley, and Allison families. Descendants of those interred have gathered annually since the 1930s for a reunion and cemetery cleaning, and in 1998, 
they formed the Cottonwood Cemetery Association. It's designated as a historic Texas cemetery. Interesting. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. Now, there's a front gate at the end of this lane. But there is a gate that says cottonwood barbed, on it. Yeah, there's barbed wire that runs along both sides of this road all the way up to that gate. So I don't know where the bodies are buried. I'm guessing there's a cemetery yeah. there's a cemetery plots on that side of these trees down there on the other end. When I looked it up online, behind that gate is where the headstones are. Gotcha. So in fact, I think I might see some through the gate there. So maybe on the other side of that yeah. gate, that's where the cemetery is. I just can't is. quite get close yeah. enough with the with the camera to actually get it. But so um, because so, there's so this odd, I, I can see that there is a gate down there. I could see it online, but there is this odd little fence here. So this is private property, evidently. I, or well, now, no. not now, but it was for the longest time. But it's this, been deeded to the county. Yeah, I'm guessing that this road was just the access to the cemetery. So you got to drive down this road to get to the actual cemetery. I would guess so. But who knows? So now it belongs to Henderson County. In I theory. Guess, I guess that makes it public land. But In theory. I don't know. <laughs> but there's a gate that is closed, and I respect the gate that is closed. But this is interesting, very interesting. Um, I wonder if they're still burying people here. I would guess so. I would guess so. So we're off to the next place. Okay. Toward County Road 3907, then turn left onto County Road 3907. Turn left onto County Road 3907. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Farm to Market Road 2709. walked in between the barn there. Look here. See the chickens on top of the chicken coop? Yeah. Okay. So he went down in the woods or somewhere. No. They got an outhouse too. There it is. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Let's see what else they got. Why are you so Two fascinated with this donkey? Two of them. Check them out. I'm not sure I can get them on the video because of your screen, but don't worry about it. Nope. Two little miniature donkeys. Okay. Let's go down the road a piece, buddy. Well, we're in uh, Goshen Cemetery, right outside of Eustis here. Uh, across the street over there, uh, well, that's a residence there, it looks like. But there's a state Right there park. is the state park. Right on the other side of the road with a lake over there. I'm sure they've probably got camping. But this is Goshen Cemetery, and it was named, it was after, established after the Civil War. A little uh, community here called Goshen. And it was named for the biblical place uh, called Goshen, where, you know, the Hebrews called it the land of milk and honey. It was in Egypt uh, when, uh, when the Hebrews were under slavery in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, the Pharaoh gave them this uh, little plot of land called Goshen, and that was theirs. And uh, it was just a place of, uh, of a place uh, that was rich and plentiful. And that's, uh, that's what uh, the Hebrews called it. So this, this was named after that, uh, that uh, community in Egypt, uh, the Hebrew uh, community, Goshen. And it served as a rural farm and as a marketing center for farmers as well. It was also the rest stop for trail drivers herding cattle on the Chisholm Trail uh, going from East Texas. Uh, it existed through the latter part of the 19th century the railroad was built through the area. Merchants moved their businesses to nearby Eustis, where the railroad actually runs through right. there, and uh, set up a settlement there on the new rail line, and that kind of killed Goshen. Um, but Goshen remains 
the last physical reminder of a once thriving trading center, according to local legend. The cemetery was founded when a, when a nomadic cowboy became sick and died while working on a nearby ranch. A large grave and stone fence marked the burial place of the cowboy. We'll walk up there and take a look here in a sec. Many graves are unmarked. The first documented burial is Benjamin Hooker in 1869. And there are more than 450 marked graves here uh, for infants and children, pioneer settlers and their, their descendants, and then veterans, veterans of America's uh, various wars. And uh, that's what we've got here at Goshen. They got a little tabernacle down there with some seating and things. We're going to go down here and take a look. I think it's a pavilion. Yeah. I don't think it's a tabernacle. It's a pavilion, but it's got the row seats, and it looks kind of like a tabernacle. We'll, we'll take a look at it. I can see that this area would, would spark of the land of milk and honey because when it rains in Texas, I mean, it has not rained here much, and it's still green in this area. So there's a lot of underground aqueducts that bubble to the surface and clearly provide water for the prairie grasses. It's green, that's for sure, even though it's dry. I mean, even even as far west as our area, it's still green. The grass is still green. Our tanks are dry, but the grass is still green. Okay, so... I suspect that this pavilion is not actually used as a tabernacle, although it, I could see that it could be. Well, doesn't it look like a place you would have a church service? Yeah, but I don't think they do that. We don't know. Maybe they come here and have all kinds of other events. They could have a revival, though. That would be done. They, they got tables. I imagine they, they may rent it out. Who knows? Let's all go have a, a reunion in the in the church cemetery? Gather up folks to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> you need to be a little more respectful. There's the stone for the cowboy it looks like. Yeah, right there in the fence. No. No, there's a st right there. Here. Oh, over here? Yeah. Why they got this one fenced off? Well, why they got these fenced off? I don't know. Yep, this must be the Cowboys burial. That would make sense. So we saved the best for last. <laughs> this here is the site of Centerville. We're right on Cedar Creek Lake between Eustis and Gun Barrel City here in Texas. This used to Payne be... Payne Springs is right there too. Payne Springs is right yeah, over here. Payne Springs is just right... Uh, right there. Yeah, just right over yonder. <laughs> so this uh, was Buffalo County at one time, a long, long time ago. No, I, it wasn't Buffalo County. No, Buffalo was the county seat. Here Buffalo Anderson. started out as county seat. Okay, and that was in 1848, but due to a central location in the county, on land donated by James Harper Starr, who was a Texas statesman at the time, well-known bigwig, you know, you know how they are, they like to give stuff away. They give anyway, away land all the time. The clerk's records were kept in a log cabin, courthouse. Yeah, I that? think, hold up, I think 1848 is when Texas enacted the law that the county seat had to be in the center, in of, the the county, center of the county, and that's why it was moved in 1848. That makes a lot of sense. I know, it scares me. Because Texans think like that for some real, real weird reason. Anyway. It's still a law. Now, they reduced the county area 
size in 1850. Yep. They reduced it, made so, it smaller. So Centerville was no longer the center of the they county. they did that, they moved the county They moved the county seat. To Athens, because it was the center of the county. Yeah. And then when that happened, Centerville died. This went... It's just gone. Kaput. Because everybody started going to Athens thinking Athens was the big deal. You know, hey, you know, we got courthouse up there. Look, Goshen died. Goshen died because... Goshen died because of the railroad. The railroad okay. killed Goshen. Athens killed Centerville. And Eustace in the midst of all of these... Took Cottonwood out. In the, yep, and in the midst of all these dead communities, Eustace rose up from the ashes like the phoenix. It was great. For a minute. It was great for a minute, and then all of a sudden, railroad died, cars came around. And that was the end of Eustace. Athens grew. Eustace is still alive It's and still kicking, there, but, but it's, it's a very small town. it's on its last leg, and it's got two horses. I saw them both. They're in the same yard. <laughs> Hello, folks. Driving Pope. down the road, these two horses, one of them's laying down, so he ain't feeling too good. And the other one, he's standing up going, what's going on? Everybody left me. And that, folks, is all about Eustace, Centerville, Cottonwood, and, and Goshen. Goshen. All right here in Henderson County, Texas. We'll see you next week. All right, if I don't do this right, then my wife, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget... Share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.